Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to our channel. Today we wanted to do a little New Year's special. Today is the 30th of December, 31st of December, so it's New Year's Eve later that night, late, later that night, later today. And tomorrow is the 1st of January. We're gonna do a little tarot card reading for our system, what 2022 has in store for us and more like how we should approach and what we should keep in mind for the next year. We are using these ones, which are cat tarot cards, which I personally extremely love and hopefully you're going to enjoy it. It's a very relaxing thing and you might learn a bit about us as a system. Maybe not, maybe you're just gonna listen to us and our weird voice and enjoy the little cute, cute drawings of these cards because, for example, this is one of them. So we decided to do a Mandela spread. It's since it's a cat tarot, they also have like cute names. It's called the Belly Rub. I'm not sure if you can see that, but um, this little guide there are a lot of things explained because it's hard for us to remember everything, as well as it gives a good like a few examples of what spreads one can do and how to um, read them and um, that's that's pretty nice so we're gonna do a Mandela spread and I'm gonna shortly read the introduction of it. The Mandela is a nine card spread involving the current spiritual path and providing an opportunity for self-reflection. It can provide an overview of the current place in and relationship with the universe or answer questions such as what will make me happy or what should I work on changing about myself. So personally the question we wanted to do since it is a new year's special we just want to know what the new year has in store for us as a system. Not a specific altar, just us as a system. I'm going to orientate myself on this and I'm going to go and and then I'm going to go ahead. So now we picked a few cards, as you could see, you're not really able to see um, all of them because it's not really fitting in the frame, but we are gonna turn around the cards one by one, then we are gonna show to you, read the explanation that's read, like written down in this little, in this little cute guide, um, and tell you what this card is referring to and in which context it has to be interpreted or is supposed to be interpreted and maybe we're talking a bit about it maybe not let's start with the number one within this set of the mandala which is this one the one in the middle it is the page of swords They're all cat themed, if you have not noticed, about the cat tarot. So, the Page of Swords is a reminder to stay on your toes. Upright, the page may be a bit jumpy, but it's hard to contain this level of energy. Who knows what's around the next corner? It could be a nice treat or a formidable foe. Either way, that cunning sense of curiosity is going to insist that you find out. 
it is supposed to be read in context with the current themselves, their current mindset, situation in life, outlook and attitude. Next is number two, which is up here. It is the page of wands. So it's another page. Um, but it is reversed, so I pulled it upside down. In which case, the page of wands is um, like all pages in the tarot, the page of wands brings a youthful energy but can also bring his youthful lack of judgment. Reversed. Your over-eager energy has resulted in setbacks, indecisiveness, impatience and even aimlessness. It's past time to figure out a course of action, a line of pursuit. Just don't let the flash of wing of a wing distract you. It is supposed to be read in context of ambitions and base desires. And in that case, I would personally refer to that that our system is striving for goals that are hard to work towards, that we are comparing ourselves with others that do not struggle with the things that we do, that we compare our limits and the ways that we feel exhaustion and the way that we are limited by certain things that we are ignoring them, that we do go over limits that our body sets, that to overexhaust us, things that take energy and things that take energy that could be avoided, which in the new year we are going to definitely take more responsibility about our body's physical health, about our mental health and just like this time of month, like December, we took a little break and all of you were so understanding and so lovely about it and overall it was actually not something we felt bad for. Right now this was an idea that I had today, something that I love doing. I am in love doing this for our system but I'm not feeling any pressure at all. I'm not feeling any pressure to do it right or do or not do mistakes. I, I'm sorry if I say the word tarot, 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 fal falsch, <laughs> wrong. Um, but I love you all, so I'm not quite sure where I was going with that. But never mind, let's move on to the next one, with it, which is number three is over here. It is the is it it is five of cups or five of bowls if you refer to it in this cat tarot. <laughs> it is upright so um that's a good thing it's a good thing in terms of I know in which way I have to read it. Five of Cups is a warning that there may be loss, sorrow, departure or spiritual exhaustion. But rest assured, all is not lost. It's hard not to focus on our empty bowls. There may be some confusion, endings or disappointment on the horizon. Perhaps it's time for a change of scenery, especially if it puts some distance between you and those causing you anguish. There is no turning back, but you'll move on. The bridge in the distance is a good sign leading you to where you're supposed to be. Friends and family may provide fresh bowls and help you move forward. It is supposed to be read in context to hopes and dreams, the querent's higher goals. Next is number four, which is down here. You can just almost see it. It is upside down again and it is the page of cups another page and the page of cups is as usual a youthful perspective but still willing to take a good look at his reflection in order to understand his true feelings 
Upside down, that kittenish energy can spell frustration and immaturity. There's a little too much drinking out of the toilet and not nearly enough responsibility happening. It's time to pull together and get down to whatever you're avoiding. It's in context, it's supposed to be read in context with achievements, accomplishments and current focus on their day-to-day -day existence. Next is number five, which you can definitely not see. It's up all the way down here. Uh, it's another upside down card, which should be three of wands. And the three of wands means, or is about the confluence of inner balance and our outward connections to the world. The three of wands promises something new on the horizon. Reversed, turning your back doesn't always expand your view. Sometimes it just means you're facing a wall. A wall, avoiding confrontation perhaps. Maybe you're better off on your own, but beware of turning your back on loved ones. You might be missing out on some fun and frolicking. Frolicking? Frolicking. This is um, in regards to dependencies and obsessions, areas of great passion or preoccupation. The next one is this, number six. And um, it's... The Hanged Man. Another upside down... Upside down card. Upside down kitty cat. Um, it's the number 12. And it's read in a way that although it looks like doom and danger, this card isn't the disaster it appears to be. Upside down, the card is a reminder that patience stops being a virtue after a while. After a while. Eventually, the shoe will drop. You probably should too. It's supposed to be read in the context of strength and positive aspects of the crown's nature. Then there's number seven right here. It is... <laughs> I, I think it might be another wands one. Seventh maybe? Seven of wands? Could be, could be, could be. Maybe, yes, no, maybe so. And um, yes, you know, stranger to Tennessee and perseverance at all costs. Some may even call it stubbornness, definitely. Our system or many of our altars are quite stubborn. Upright, while you may be outnumbered by your enemies, rest assured that your position on that high pre precipice gives you the distinct advantage. Stand your ground and you'll have no trouble batting them over the edge. You have the upper paw. Rest assured, you are on full control. It's supposed to be read in the context of, of faults and weaknesses that the current might focus on improving. I feel like this has a lot to do with the way that we are dealing with negativity and hate and disrespectfulness that is brought against us as a system, as someone in the system community, as someone who struggles with... Uh, there's a lot that we have to learn and probably a lot that we will learn in the following years since our channel does grow bit by bit and we are reaching more individuals, more beings, more souls, more systems and all of you are welcome here and there will always be a few that won't be as nice to us to other systems to people with mental illness in general people with to people with invisible disabilities invisible illnesses so that's definitely something that we have a weakness for because we usually end up blaming ourselves and that's something we have to learn and we hope that you all know that you are amazing and that just because some stranger tells you otherwise does not change the way you experience life, your illness, your disability 
and does not invalidate the experiences you have made. They have no right to do so. And we love you. You are loved. Number eight is this one. It is six of cups, I believe. Six of cups. And it's about a youthful kitten-like innocence is front and center. Happy childhood memories abound. I would love to have some. Upright, perhaps you're reconnecting with your inner kitten or with actual kittens. Either way, good things from the past are coming up for you. Maybe it's a good time to lay in a ray of sunshine with an old pal. Pal. Spend quality time teaching a young one how to keep their food inside the bowl, as opposed to, say, sitting in it. Whatever is on the horizon, it's happy times ahead. I would love to hear that. I would love to do so. As you know, we actually do have a kitten. And as you know, we actually do raise them. We learn with him. We experience his lovely little memories. And that's something amazing. This card is supposed to be read with self-perception in mind and how the current sees themselves. Um, I'm starting to dissociate. <laughs> Great. So I should probably hurry up. The next one and the last one is number nine and it's the Ace of Wands. It is supposed to be read with in context with higher purpose and deepest. The Ace of Wands. Okay, creativity is in the air, along with a rainbow of possibilities. This is a time of new beginnings, motivation, inspiration, creativity, vitality and energy. Beware of letting ambition cause you to reach for too much. New ventures can promise wonderful, colorful, creative work, but there's the danger of becoming impatient, overwhelmed or overbearing. For now, that was our little cat tarot reading. I hope you guys enjoyed it. We just shared a little bit of what 2021 has in store for us, how our system should approach the next year. And let us know if you enjoy doing things like that too, if you did something like that in um, context with the new year. Hopefully stuff is going to be all right. We hope you had an amazing new year start and let's hope that this year is gonna be better than last year hopefully everything is going to settle down a bit with all the pandemic stuff we are so so over it anxiety wise like it's extremely draining it has been um a very stressful two years and the years before that were also pretty pretty harsh but overall we have learned made it another year so so cool <laughs>